Welcome to the podcast service of Sydney's FM 103.2, available on the web at fm1032.com.au. Well, we've started a series on the life of Christ, and I'm calling it a Spectator's Guide to Jesus. Whether you're a believer or not a believer, I'm hoping this series is going to help you have a plausible historical introduction to the amazing portraits of Jesus we find in our earliest sources. We begin then with the obvious first question. How do we know what we know about Jesus? What are the sources, both direct and indirect, of our knowledge of the man? Unlike the Hindu Upanishads, which focus on the believer's merger with the life force Brahman, or the Buddhist Tripitaka, which emphasizes the extinguishment of self and suffering, or even the Islamic Quran, which centers on the nature and practice of submission to God, the New Testament revolves around a series of events said to have occurred in Palestine between 5 BC and AD 30. This makes Christianity particularly open perhaps vulnerable to historical scrutiny. The logic is simple. If you claim that something spectacular took place in history, intelligent people are going to ask you historical questions. Christianity has, on the whole, welcomed this. It's as if the Christian faith places its head on the chopping block of public scrutiny and invites us all to come and take a swing. And so far, Christianity has fared pretty well. Jesus arrived on the scene at a time of great literary activity. Philosophers were writing weighty tomes on the meaning of life. Poets and playwrights were composing material to make people laugh and cry. Emperors were crafting royal propaganda to ensure they were well remembered. And historians were recording for posterity all they could discover about the startling events surrounding the rise of the Roman Empire. The non-biblical writings of this period, say 100 BC to 8200, would fill many, many shelves on your local university library. One lucky outcome of this flurry of ancient literary output is that a small-town Jewish teacher named Yeshua ben Yosef, or Jesus son of Joseph, happened to rate a mention in several of the writings of the period. This is not as predictable as you might have thought. Although today we recognize Jesus as the founder of the world's largest religion, back in the first century he was hardly known at all outside the tiny strip of Roman-ruled land called Palestine. It's a sheer and happy accident of history that Jesus rated a mention outside the texts of the New Testament. Our direct sources of information about Jesus come from three sets of ancient writings, um, Greco-Roman writings, Jewish writings, and Christian writings. I'm going to deal with the first two tonight. I'm going to look at the Christian sources tomorrow night. Jesus is mentioned in passing on numerous occasions in the writings of Greeks and Romans in the period following his death. Um, The complete list includes the following. The pagan historian Thallus, around AD 55, in the third volume of his book called The Histories, mentions a darkness that coincided with the crucifixion of Jesus. He describes it as a natural eclipse of the sun and not a supernatural event of any significance. Uh, Secondly, the Stoic writer Mara Bar Serapion, shortly after AD 70, refers to Jesus as a king and teacher and compares him to the Greek martyrs Pythagoras and Socrates. Uh, Thirdly, the Roman historian Cornelius Tacitus, um, who lived AD 56 to 120, scathingly refers to Jesus' execution under Pontius Pilate and describes the movement surrounding him as a deadly superstition. Fourthly, the Roman administrator Pliny the Younger, AD 61 to 113, mentions the early Christian worship of Jesus as a god. Fifthly, the Roman historian Suetonius, around AD 120, refers to disturbances among Roman Jews, of which there were thousands, over the claim that Jesus was the Christ, the Jewish Messiah. Sixthly, the Greek satirist um, Lucian of Samosata, um, who lived in the second century, ridicules Jesus as a crucified sophist, a fake in other words. And seventh, The Greek intellectual Celsus, around AD 175, insists that Jesus' conception was suspect 
and that his miracles were mere Egyptian magic. They're the seven from the Greco-Roman sources, uh, but Jesus rated a mention in four Jewish texts from the period shortly after his death. Let me run through these four. Firstly, the um, first century Jewish historian Josephus recounts Jesus' fame as a teacher, as a healer, as a martyr, and he also reports that um, Jesus' resurrection was mentioned by eyewitnesses. Secondly, in another text by the same writer, Josephus recounts the martyrdom of a bloke named James, whom Josephus describes as, quote, the brother of Jesus, the so-called Messiah. The same brother, James, incidentally, appears frequently throughout the New Testament. Thirdly, the Talmud, which is an ancient exposition of Jewish law, contains a passage that's probably dated between AD 100 and 200, justifying Jesus' execution at the time of the Jewish Passover on the grounds that he, quote, led Israel astray and practiced sorcery. And in a later text, fourthly, the same Talmud insists that Jesus' mother, Mary, was an adulteress. Now, these Greco-Roman and Jewish references provide little more than an outline of Jesus' life. They're too brief and cursory to be of value in reconstructing the whole life of Jesus. Some of the passages were written too late to be of any historical value at all, actually. Nevertheless, it's still worth listing the handful of details about Jesus we can glean from these non-Christian sources without even opening a Bible. Let me just quickly give you the list. We know the name Jesus. We know the place and time frame of his public ministry. We know the name of his mum. We know the ambiguous nature of his birth. We know the name of one of his brothers, James. We know of his fame as a teacher, his fame as a miracle worker, the attribution to him of the title Messiah or Christ. We know of his kingly status in the eyes of some. We know the time and manner of his execution. We know about the involvement of both Roman and Jewish leaders in his death. We know of the coincidence of an eclipse at the time of his crucifixion. We have the report of his appearances following death. And finally, we know of the flourishing of a movement that worshipped Jesus after his death. Now, obviously, nothing can be gained from all of this about what Jesus stood for, about what he expected from his followers, or even about what drove him to the path of martyrdom. For these details, we have to turn to the third and most important direct source of information about Jesus, the writings of the New Testament itself. And I'll be looking at these sources tomorrow night. All I want to say for now is, don't let anyone ever tell you we don't know anything about Jesus outside the Bible. Actually, there are 11 references to him from non-Christian sources in the period. And they tell us quite a bit, I think you've got to admit. I'm John Dixon. We hope you enjoyed this FM 103.2 podcast. To listen to more great audio, visit fm1032.com.au.